I know you've been writing about the 9-11 debacle uh, and him blowing it off entirely. I mean, I just, just didn't think it was important to be at any one of the four sites where the planes went down. Instead, he was in Alaska. That was bad enough, Maureen. It was completely disrespectful. Um, Ron DeSantis was there. I saw him at ground zero. He's, he's only running for president. He's not the sitting president. And, and this from a man who you've pointed out wants us to see him as our empathizer in chief. So uh, let's just start there on, on how egregious you think it was that he refused to show he was in Alaska instead. I mean, his empathizer in chief thing has always been a lie and it was peddled hardcore uh, during that last presidential presidential election by the media. I mean, I personally, I always thought it was very interesting that Obama was really holding back his endorsements, uh, like his public full throated endorsement of Joe Biden. That always struck me as very interesting. Um, I think situating himself in Alaska, literally as far afield as you could get from any of the nine 11 sites, it was just a, it, it reminded me of his, his demeanor at Dover when those 13 caskets were being loaded off of those military planes and he was checking his watch. He caught, he was oh, caught checking God. his watch each time one casket came off. Like how much longer do I have to endure this? The fact of the matter is if, if, if a tragedy does not affect Joe Biden or anyone in his immediate sphere, he really doesn't care. I found his reaction to the chaos and the unnecessary deaths at Kabul during his disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan was heartless. He was asked two days later in a primetime interview, I believe it was Lester Holt, about the 17-year-old boy who fell to his death clinging to that C-17 plane. Mm. And Biden just snapped at him. He said that was four or five days ago. What do you like? Come on, man. Like his come on, man. You know, this sort of juvenile sort of swatting away of things that are inconvenient truths to him. Just as you saw in that exchange with Trump saying my son did nothing wrong. He did. He did nothing wrong. He did do something wrong. He had zero experience in, 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 in energy with a Ukrainian energy company. He's pocketing eighty thousand dollars a month. Are you kidding me? Um, you know, I think as I wrote in the column, the, the calculation by his staff must have been that to see Biden dozing off or wandering away during a 9-11 ceremony would be an optic they could never walk back. They could never excuse. It would give Trump, you know, free campaign ads for the for the for the cycle. Um, and again, that is my question. If he can't even make it through a 9-11 ceremony, what is he doing in the Oval Office? What, what right, what business does he have to be there? It's, it was amazing because he couldn't find the time to show up at one of the sites where the planes mm -hmm. went down um, and, the, and the buildings were hit and the Pentagon was hit. But he could find time to announce a new deal with Iran where we're, we're going to release $6 billion to them in exchange for some prisoners. Like that, they thought 9-11 was an appropriate day to, to confirm that deal had just taken place. And then, Maureen, he goes out. And I mean, I want to say it's bizarre, but it's not bizarre given the just the range of Joe Biden's strange conduct over the past two years. He lied about where he was the day after the attacks on September 12th, 2001. Listen to how, he, what, where he would like us to believe he was. Ground Zero in New York. And I remember standing there the next day and looking at the building. I felt like I was looking through the gates of hell. It looked so devastating because the way you could, the way from where you could stand. Except it's not true. He was not at ground zero on 9-12. He was in Washington, D.C., and he did not mander up to see ground zero until weeks later with a congressional delegation. He did not stand there, and even his description of what he saw um, didn't match what he originally said. So I don't know if this is an intentional self-aggrandizement. I was there. I was in the middle of it all. 
or if he's really just crossed over to that point in life that some people reach thanks to dementia and old age, where all the memories meld and sometimes one story kind of merges with another and both had nuggets of truth, but put together, it's not true. Either way, you don't lie about 9-11. Yeah, I mean, it's akin to stolen valor. I think any of us who were in New York City that day regard it as a sacred day um, and one in which, (laughs) you know, there are, to put himself there, honestly, it doesn't surprise me. I think you're being quite generous in, in theorizing that maybe his memories are, are, are sort of melding into each other in the whatever stages of obvious dementia he is in. But throughout his career, he really, I have always thought he was probably, you know, a narcissist, like a, probably a malignant one. I always, always found it incredibly strange and disturbing that he was sworn into office in the hospital room where his two sons ages four and two, I believe were in, you know, I think Hunter was in traction. They were, they had, they had survived that terrible car crash that took the life of their mother and their infant sister. And instead of stepping back and saying, maybe I need to be there for my children right now, Maybe I'm going to do a very quiet swearing in ceremony on the Hill. He used that hospital room and those injured, traumatized children as props. That may be a very cynical read on it, but I, I, I think this is always who Joe Biden has been. And I think if he is not at the center of the story and in some way looking like a real tough guy, I mean, do, lest we forget corn pop, the gang member at the community pool who Joe Biden set straight with a chain, uh, 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 you know, uh, this is who he is. And um, he, as much as his staff tries to help him from himself, this is going to be a very different campaign cycle. He will not have the luxuries of his basement. Right. Well, Or will he? I don't know. You know, I think one downside of Trump refusing to do the GOP debates is Joe Biden's going to use it and say, I'm not doing them either. I'm not doing a debate with you. I, you know, I, you've already proven that this is an option available. Trump says he's going to do the general election debates if he gets the nomination. But Mm -hmm. I do think it's a bad precedent. You know, before it was just a given, everyone's going to participate in the debates. You know, obviously there was that one where Trump got mad that yours truly was going to be there a long time ago and he wouldn't show up. Um, But in general, it's been a given that you show up for the debates. And I think that that's the Democrats will use this if in fact he remains the nominee, right? To, to get him out of it because Maureen, how, how could they put him out there? You know, it's such a great point. I mean, it would be a devastating precedent to set to rob the American people of the chance to see each party's nominee head to head, face to face on their own, debate the issues. And if the media swallows this and we're in danger of it happening because with each Biden misstep or corruption probe or anything that's remotely uh, compromising, you know, the media continues to sort of just turn a blind eye to it. And if this is allowed to be set, if 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 both candidates say, not doing it, I'm going to talk to my people on social media, I don't need you guys, you know, we do, we do need moderators. We do need to hear these issues hashed out in real time. You've heard betting and apparel brands say they're the softest and most comfortable, but do they promise that that's the case? At Cozy Earth, you get the softest, most luxurious feeling fabric guaranteed. That means if you do not love Cozy Earth's bamboo sheets, you have 100 days to get your money back. But they're not worried about refunds because once you try Cozy Earth, you are hooked for life. Start with Cozy Earth's best-selling bamboo sheet set, the thing that started it all made of 100% premium viscose from bamboo. Super soft, ethically sourced sheets, which regulate your temperature, keeping you cool in the summer and cozy in the winter. 
And it's not just sheets. They have pajamas, loungewear, love the loungewear, bath towels, and much more. Unbelievably soft and unforgettably comfortable. The coziest way to make your home a sanctuary. Don't forget Cozy Earth's guarantee. All of their products can be returned or exchanged within 100 days and include an additional 10-year warranty against defects. Go to CozyEarth.com, enter code MEGAN at checkout for up to 40% off your order right now. CozyEarth.com, promo code M-E-G-Y-N, CozyEarth.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.